These are all the videos I made during the month of October 2023, which I have compiled for your enjoyment. And remember, guys, if you don't like my content, then don't subscribe. Roll the tape. Where is my base located on Bender's MC? One of the best parts about playing on my server is getting to build your base. Maybe you walked 5,000 blocks to find the perfect spot to build your house, or perhaps you just dug it into the side of a mountain. Whatever it is, building a base is a core part of the Minecraft multiplayer experience. Most players seem to think that because I own the server and can do awesome things like access creative mode or use world edit that I must have a super elaborate and expensive base that I live in. However, that's not exactly the case. Because I own the server, I could technically make the argument that the server is my house, and all of your bases on the server are just different rooms inside my house. Okay, and before you flame me for being like a fucking narcissist, just hear me out. I actually love to just hang out in random players' bases every once in a while and just pretend that I live there, but if your house is ugly, I probably won't hang out there. So to answer the question, my base is technically nowhere and everywhere at the same time. Subscribe. Okay, fine. I'll talk about chi blocking, even though you know I hate showcasing it. Just for some context, on my Minecraft server, players can wield the four elemental powers, which are earth bending, water bending, fire bending, and air bending. But if you open up your bending menu, you'll notice that there's actually a mysterious fifth option called chi blocking. Oh, but Blitz, I, I thought this was a four elements Minecraft server, not a five elements Minecraft server. Oh my God, shut the fuck up. Chi blocking is actually not a bending type. It's a melee martial arts style that is supposed to be used to counter bending abilities. It basically turns you into a full-blown ninja. You can throw smoke bombs at people, run super fast, jump super high, go invisible, and most notably, you can stun players and temporarily disable their bending. It's like regular PvP on steroids. So if you've ever wanted to be a rebel and not use bending on a bending server, then you're probably a loser. Okay, but in all seriousness, this is gonna be your best option. Subscribe. A full daylight cycle in Minecraft lasts approximately 20 minutes, and unless you get every single player to go to sleep, it works the same way on my Minecraft server. But what you might not know is that the time of day on my server can also affect how powerful your bending is. For example, fire bending is stronger during the daytime. Because the sun is out, your moves will deal more damage and some abilities will even have increased range and area of effect. On the other hand, water bending is stronger at night. Since the moon controls the tides, at night water bending abilities will also appear much larger and deal significantly more damage. This is really important to keep in mind because the time of day can completely change the outcome of a fight. It's good to always keep a clock in your inventory so that no matter what time of day it is, you always have the right bending equipped. Subscribe. These are different ways you can go invisible with your bending abilities on my Minecraft server. First, if you're an airbender, you can bind the Mirage ability and all you have to do is press crouch and you'll become invisible just long enough to escape danger. But do keep in mind that this move will slow you down, so try and run in the opposite direction of your enemy so you can clear as much distance as possible. Next, if you're an earthbender, you can use the dust cloud ability while standing on top of earthbendable blocks to temporarily become invisible. The ability will kick up a large cloud of dust to cover your escape, and this can be especially helpful in caves or underground. Lastly, if you're a chi blocker, which isn't actually a bending type, you can use your camouflage passive ability to become invisible in tall grass. And unlike the other abilities, chi blockers can actually stay invisible as long as they want just by holding crouch. Subscribe. Spirit bending on my Minecraft server is back, and here's how you can get it. There are two types of spirit bending you can get, light spirit bending and dark spirit. Light spirit abilities can heal you and your friends, it also grants a bunch of helpful buffs, and can summon magical light spirit sheep to protect you. On the other hand, dark spirit abilities can intoxicate and confuse your enemies, it can also create black holes that suck in mobs and other players, and you can also summon spider minions to fight off bad guys. I'll make a more comprehensive video detailing these later, but here's how to get it. Light and dark spirit bending can now be accessed through your bending menu, and you can equip them alongside your main elements to complement it. Players will unlock light spirit bending after three days of total playtime, and dark spirit bending after seven days. If you've already played more than seven days on Bender's MC, then you'll automatically get both of them. Subscribe! Here's some more people watching on my Four Elements Minecraft server. First, I found two waterbenders using the water bubble ability to create an air pocket so that they could build their underwater base. Next, I found two more waterbenders messing around with their abilities. One of them decided to put on their plant bending and get up close and personal with the leaf dome ability. This guy looks like he's doing some redstone, which involves a sheep and a boat and a piston. Hey, what the hell is going on here? Next, I found this guy who's building a train. I, I don't know if this is going to be his base or just an aesthetic piece, but I think it's pretty cool. This guy was going 20 miles over the speed limit with his air bending. I can't even keep up with him in creative mode. This is a great way to travel long distance, by the way. This is the Sisyphus house.
Remember guys, the best part about people watching is that you guys are the main characters. Subscribe and join my server. These are some of the new light spirit bending abilities that just got added back to my Minecraft server. First is light beam, which is just a magical laser you shoot out of your forehead. It's a pretty basic ability and it does some good damage. Next is alleviate, an ability that you can use on yourself or other players which will remove all negative potion effects. So if you're still waiting for your dad to come back with the milk, you don't have to anymore. Next is enlightenment, which instead of taking away potion effects actually gives you several helpful buffs to heal up and win your fight. Now moving on to combos, this one is called sanctuary, which is a crowd control ability that creates a defensive barrier to push away mobs and non-light spirit benders, as well as buffing you and other light spirit benders with resistance. This next combo is crazy. It's called awakening, and when it's performed correctly, it will summon several light spirit sheep to your aid who will attack mobs and dark spirit benders with lasers. Yes, you get sheep which shoot freaking lasers to protect you. How cool is that? Drop a like if you want to see dark spirit next. These are the new dark spirit bending abilities we just added back to my Minecraft server. First up is dark beam, which is a purple spirit laser you shoot out of your forehead. It's a lot like light beam, but instead it deals extra damage to light spirit benders. Next is intoxicate, an ability which lets you inflict negative potion effects on your enemies. It also removes any positive potion effects like speed or regeneration, so there isn't really a good way to counter it. This next move is called onslaught. It's a dash ability that will allow you to pass through other entities and damage them at the same time. This move can be really helpful if you're cornered. This next move is a combo called pandemonium, and if activated properly, it will create a large large black hole on the ground which will slowly drag all nearby mobs and players to the center. This last move is called Corruption, and just like the Corruption in Terraria, it starts turning things purple. It'll also spawn spider minions to fight off light spirit benders. Subscribe. What is the best earthbending sub element on my Minecraft server? Well, it's probably lava bending since it deals a ton of damage, not to mention it lights your enemies on fire so they'll take even more damage. Oh, and I almost forgot about Lava Disc, which is basically a deadly frisbee you can summon that incinerates anything in its path. But what about metal bending? It definitely deals good damage, and you can use it to mend iron tools like an anvil, but my favorite skill is grappling. You can use the metal hook ability to instantly grapple to walls and other surfaces, sort of like Spider-Man or a budget version of Mission Impossible. Okay, but sand bending has to be the real goat. I love sand bending. It's coarse, rough, and infuriating. You can summon your own mini sandstorms for crowd control, and all your moves deal damage and inflict blindness. Your enemies won't know what hit them. Literally. You know, I've always wondered, here's some more people watching on my Four Elements Minecraft server. First, I found this earthbender digging around with his abilities, probably looking for some diamonds, when he accidentally fell into this bedrock pit which had a wither in it. I've never seen a player leave the game so fast. Next, I found a lightning bender checking out their abilities before making the stupidest possible choice while fighting a creeper. I found this water temple some guy built, probably for like a water bending kingdom. The inside looks really nice, but what caught my eye was this altar and the pure water stone they worship. Okay, obviously they don't want people touching it, so I've decided to swap it out with a cookie. They'll never notice. You know, sometimes I randomly come across entire cities that people just build and live in. Like, goddamn, this is beautiful. Where do you guys find the time for this? Boy, I sure do hate it when I get my Minecraft horse stuck in a tree. I think this guy's base looks excellent. Get it? Remember, guys, the best part about people watching is that you guys are the main characters. Subscribe and join my server. What is the best waterbending sub-element on my Minecraft? Minecraft server. Well, it's probably ice bending because of how versatile it is. Not only can it deal incredible damage, but it can also freeze your enemies in a giant ice ball. And I can't forget to mention that ice applies a speed and jump boost if you run on top of it, meaning you can make your own waterbender highways. But what about plant bending? You can use it to equip a powerful vine suit that lets you jump super high, swing on vines like a grappling hook, and throw deadly razor leaves at people. And as long as you have your vine suit on, you'll be invulnerable to drowning or taking fall damage. But let's be honest, bloodbending is definitely the fan favorite. You can use your powers to manipulate blood like water and pick up mobs and other players almost like you're using the force on them. You can throw entities super far or control their limbs to make them attack each other. It's also really helpful for moving villagers around. But you know, what's even more helpful is knowing this is the best way to make money on my Minecraft server. After you've joined Benders MC and picked your bending type, the first thing you need to do is craft a pickaxe and mine some granite. I'd recommend using earth bending since it can help with mining. Spend the next hour or so collecting as much granite as you can and then sell it on the item shop. Granite sells for a good price and a whole inventory can earn you upwards of $300,000. Now you can just keep mining granite forever and make money like that, but if you're smart, you'll invest that money into automated farms and start collecting passive income. I'd start by building a cactus 
farm, not only are they cheap to construct, but they can be easily expanded. Sugarcane and kelp farms also work well, but they're a little more expensive. Passive income will make you money while you're just having fun on the server. And once you've made enough money, you can then start buying spawners and build you without us. Here's some more people watching on my Four Elements Minecraft server. First, I found a waterbender making an ice platform with his phase change ability. I guess his idea was that he could ride a boat and then generate ice underneath him to go faster. It's a cool idea, but it didn't really work out as intended. Next, I found this earthbender doing some mining near the world border. I guess you could say he went to the edge of the earth to find these diamonds. Next, I found this player meticulously placing blocks evenly spaced apart using a grid they made. I came back like half an hour later and they were using their water bending to scaffold to build these big diorite columns. Huh, maybe they're building something Greek. Okay, this guy Dopey might be the most indecisive player I have ever seen. He built the exact same house 14 times on top of each other, all using different materials. Huh, I wonder what material I should use to build my house. Fuck it, every block. Remember guys, the best part about people watching is that you guys are the main characters. Subscribe and join my server. Coffee. This is how you can turn iron ore into a deadly weapon on my Minecraft server. And no, I'm not talking about an iron sword, I'm talking about metal bending, which is probably the coolest earth bending sub element. First of all, you don't even need a pickaxe because you can just use your extraction ability to instantly harvest metal ores. Once you smelt it, you'll have iron ingots, which will allow you to use metal bending abilities. Like metal hook, which functions as a grappling hook, which you can use to climb on any surface. Or quick weld, an ability which lets you repair your tools just like an anvil. If you go craft those ingots into nuggets, you can use your shrapnel ability to launch them at your enemies like a shotgun. If you craft some iron blocks and place them around your base, you can use your abilities to turn them into makeshift turrets to take out other players. Subscribe and join my server. What if you were exploring on my Minecraft server and you found some ocean ruins, but you're worried you won't be able to hold your breath long enough to get the treasure? As long as you choose water bending, you get access to the water bubble ability, which lets you walk around in a personal air bubble. Now, let's say you go mining and find some diamonds, but they're on the other side of this huge lava pool. If you're a firebender, you can just use your heat control ability to cool the lava into stone and then bridge across. Now that you have your diamonds, how are you going to make it back up to the surface? Stacking up block by block is going to take forever. So instead, just use your earthbending abilities to burrow a tunnel back up to the surface in seconds. Once you're out of the mines, you realize the sun is setting and that mobs are starting to spawn. You can just use your airbending abilities to fast travel and you'll probably even be home in time for dinner. Subscribe and join my server. These are some of the easiest bending combos on my Minecraft server. Starting off with Fire Kick, a short range fire bending combo that only requires one move to perform. Just activate the Fire Blast ability twice in a row, hold Crouch, and then use the same ability again to activate the combo. It does some good damage and it has a low cooldown. Next up is Air Wheel, an air bending combo which also only requires one move to activate. To use the combo, tap Crouch twice with the Air Scooter ability and then Punch. This ability lets you travel super fast and it'll deal damage and knock back entities that get in your way. Moving on to plant walk, a plant bending combo for water benders. To activate this combo, look at a plant source and then tap crouch twice with the torrent ability and once with water spouse. The move will allow you to grab yourself with a vine and then fly around. It's actually really handy for building. Subscribe and join my server. In 2020, I built the world spike, a Minecraft survival base that extends continuously from bedrock to the build limit. I must preface this by saying that I actually built this before the caves and cliffs update, meaning the build height was only 256 blocks, but that actually worked out perfectly for my math. You see, I divided the building into 16 equal floors, the exact square root of 256. I designed four larger subterranean floors and 12 surface levels inside a hexagonal tube connected by an elevator system. Every floor would represent a different purpose, some of which included a lobby at Y64, two entire villager colonies, tree farms, kelp farms, a full apiary for bees, a two-story luxury hotel with eight rooms, and and of course, my personal penthouse. Underground, I had more space, so I built farms, super smelters, storage rooms, and a bunch of other cool things that I unfortunately never finished. I ultimately stopped working on this project and started working on Vendors MC, the Four Elements Minecraft server that you all know and love today. Here's some more people watching on my Four Elements Minecraft server. First, I found two players using their airbending abilities to levitate so that they can walk around the ancient city without attracting any nearby wardens. Next, I found this player who decided to convert an entire ocean monument 
into his survival base. It looks like he took down all the walls inside for extra space. This guy testing out his lightning bending looked unnecessarily epic. This dude was using his earth bending abilities to x-ray faster. Just look at the way he digs straight to these diamonds. So I gave bro a friendly reminder to turn off his cheats. So I found this player throwing himself off of this tall pillar, which confused me until I noticed he was holding an elytra. This guy has no idea that you actually have to wear the elytra to use it. That is so fucking funny. Okay, update. He figured it out. Another day, another casino being built on the server. Looks like this one has roulette. And if we look at the redstone, you'll see he did it using a minecart system. Remember guys, the best part about people watching is that you guys are the main characters. Subscribe and join my server. These are some of the most interesting bending combos on my Minecraft server. Starting off with Maelstrom, a combo for waterbenders that summons a giant whirlpool. You need a bit of space for this one. The water has to be deep enough, but it will suck all nearby entities into the center, just like whirlpools in real life. Next is the crevice combo for earthbenders, and you might recognize this from the mythbenders intro. It's activated using shockwave and collapse, and it creates a giant ravine that will swallow up all your enemies. Moving on to twister, a combo for airbenders that summons a tornado. Not to be confused with the regular tornado ability, which you will require to activate this combo. The twister combo will pick up all entities in its path, which is actually pretty good for crowd control. Last, we have magma blast for lava benders. To use this combo, you'll need the lava flow ability, and what it does is it summons three powerful fireballs that you can throw at your enemies. It also protects you with a lava moat around your character. Subscribe and join my server.